But in the same context, I have to mention the sad fact of the most fraudulent document issued by the Holy See, signed by the Holy Father, in the last 30 years. And it's the very same document on which the fraternity of St. Peter and other groups base their existence. The document is called Ecclesia Dei. The document directly contradicts the tradition of moral theology handed down to us in, from the, in the past and from other popes when it says in number three, in itself, this act, they talk about the uh, con Episcopal consecrations performed by Archbishop Lefebvre with the assistance of, Archb of Bishop Castro Maya. In itself, this act was one of disobedience to the Roman pontiff in a very grave matter and of supreme importance for the unity of the church, such as it is the ordination of bishops whereby the apostolic succession is sacramentally perpetuated. Hence, such disobedience, I check this with the Latin, it is indeed such. Hence, such disobedience, which implies in practice the rejection of the Roman primacy constitutes a schismatic act. No, it doesn't. Such disobedience as such does not constitute anything but disobedience. And the new code of canon law agrees with me, because the new, mind you, the old canon law, of course, does, because never in the history of, church, of the church was uh, an illegal Episcopal consecration considered a schismatic act. Schism is automatically connected with the extreme penalty of excommunication. How come the church never put illegal Episcopal consecrations under the, pain of excom under the, the penalty of excommunication until 1949, when uh, Pius XII was faced with the... Uh, the National Church of China consecrating bishops against his will. The new code of canon law does not list when it says in canon 1382 that the Episcopal consecrations without the mandate of the Pope are other automatic excommunication does not list this crime under the, uh, the, the crimes of schism, under the crimes against the unity of the Church. The new code of canon law does not mention the Episcopal consecrations in context with schism. So the Pope cannot. The Pope is bound to canon law unless he wants to change it. So number three is a lie. Number three is an error in moral theology. Number four says, the root of this schismatic act, which it is not, the root of this schismatic act can be discerned in an incomplete and contradictory notion of tradition. So the Pope now accuses Archbishop Lefebvre of an incomplete and contradictory notion of tradition, which is quite funny when, uh, when you consider, I have read everything that Archbishop Lefebvre ever wrote. And uh, all I found was most unoriginal statements. Most unoriginal. He quotes the popes, he quotes the councils, he quotes the saints, he quotes the church fathers, he quotes the uh, appointed doctors of the church, and he never says anything out of his own. Archbishop Lefebvre was one of the most unoriginal persons in this world as far as doctrine is concerned. God bless him for that, and we thank him for that. His concept of tradition is exactly identical with the concept of tradition dogmatically pronounced in De Filius of Vatican I and dogmatically pronounced in the appropriate section and session of the Council of Trent. And it is completely in uh, accordance with everything that was ever said about tradition in the history of the Church until the infelicitous year of 1958. I say again, the root of this schismatic act can be discerned in the incomplete and contradictory notion of tradition. Incomplete because it does not take sufficiently into account the living character of tradition. The tradition has a living character, is a concept condemned so often that uh, sometimes there's so many quotations that I cannot, I, I just simply do not have them present. But you will find this in the Catholic family news. It comes with these, this living character of tradition, which, as the Second Vatican Council clearly taught, comes from the apostles and progresses in the church with the help of the Holy Spirit. There is a growth in insight into the realities and words that are being passed on. This comes about in various ways. It comes through the, con the, the contemplation and study of believers who ponder these things in their hearts. It comes from the intimate sense of spiritual realities which they experience. 
and it comes from the preaching of those who have received, along with their right of succession in the episcopate, the sure charism of truth. This is exactly a definition according to everything that Pius X condemns in his encyclical against modernism, Pascendi Dominici Gregis. But as this was my second conference in Philadelphia, I recommend you the reading of the appropriate issue of Catholic Family News. We do not have the time here.